once the rut has ended, I've always looked at the late season, which I would consider from, say, December through January, as a very difficult time to kill a mountain buck. In Pennsylvania, the rifle season kicks off during the first few weeks of December, and although some great bucks are killed every year, few hunters are consistent in doing that year after year. In most states, when gun season comes in, the hunting pressure is extremely high. They're in areas that they may not have been during some of the other seasons. So you kind of have, have some out of the box thinking when it comes to during the gun seasons. In the last few years, I've come to realize that it just takes a completely different strategy when it comes to hunting gun season and focus on those kind of escape areas, some of that security cover. You can almost throw anything out the window that you've learned from the other seasons. I don't mean that completely, but you should understand that there's hunting pressure is going to be the number one thing that's going to impact how the deer are moving and where they're hanging out during the daylight hours during those seasons. As most rifle seasons end into late December and early January, the deer start to settle down a little bit. The weather's getting a lot colder and which brings a whole nother set of challenges. But now we're switching back to a little bit of what you've seen in the early season where food is king. They're focused on surviving. They're focused on building their bodies back up after the rut. They're trying to get to a point where they can survive through the winter, no matter how harsh that it is. I used to write off the late season. In the last three years, I've killed two bucks during that time frame, and mine were in December during the gun season, but it took some different tactics and adapting to the situations to really be able to be successful when the temperatures are consistently south of freezing and snow is in the forecast. So it takes some planning from e-scouting, from boots on the ground, understanding that pressure and adapting to the situation at hand. When it comes to e-scouting for the late season, I have to break it down into two categories because you have gun season and non-gun season. The reason for this is when the pressure is very high, the deer aren't doing what they, they're normally doing later in the year during those blistering cold weather days. I've covered the basics of e-scouting earlier in the mountain buck scouting series, so I'll keep focused on this time of year specifically. During the gun season, my focus pertains to e-scouting always starts with questioning myself. So where is the pressure going to be coming from? And this is where I take a look at the Onyx Hunt web map and dive into a few things. So I'm looking for where the access points are and I'm gonna mark all of those points. I'm looking at hiking trails, if there is any in the area and how easily can people access that, gated roads. And then also, this is a Pennsylvania specific one, but they have a layer to turn on for deer hunting roads. There's roads that are only opened up during the two week gun season. And that, if so if you thought you had a spot that was a honey hole two miles back, this gated road, you might be out of luck if they open up that road. So just understand some of those things and we're gonna dive into how to find those on the map. So over on the Onyx feature here, I turn on everything with trails and rec. I turn on all those layers, camping sites, trails, trail mileages, trail slope, motorized roads and trails. Those places are gonna help you access it. So I'm looking here on the map at a place I've been scouting through the entire series. My goal is to be able to show you how to hunt each of the different seasons in one particular area. So this white line going down here is a road. And it looks like, you know, you have an access point here. This little dotted line means that's probably a gated road or an old logging road that goes back or just a non-maintained road. So there's definitely an access point right down here. So I'm going to mark that as access, save it. And actually I like to save all of these points in purple. So they just stick out when I'm looking at them on the map. And so this dotted line, I don't know if that road's open. There's not any information on it. So what I'm going to do, it's actually got labeled camp road. So there's potentially a camp somewhere back in here. So what I'm going to do is just 
mark a waypoint at the end of where this road is. I, I doesn't look like there's any civilization back there or anything, but just in case, I want to throw that on the map as well as an access area and mark it. So as I'm looking at the rest of the spots, okay, where where else can I find access into these areas? Well, right here along the road, there's a little valley that's going up. I'm zooming in, looking, is there any looks like there might be a little bit of a parking spot or a camp or something here so again going to mark that on the map label that purple and repeat the steps throughout the entire area on this side this is an example of a trail so i'm not scouting this side particularly but this is a good example of a trail system that runs up through these areas this logging cut on top we're looking at to get logging trucks in there, there has to be a road that gets into it. It looks like there was an old road that runs across the top. From the way the map looks, it doesn't appear to be open. But up on this side point here, there's a potential access point right here. So I'm going to mark that. On this bend in the road right here, it looks like a spot that somebody could access as well. So I'm going to mark that down here. All right, so now we're gonna back out and look at the area. Let's try to identify places that don't have, or where the access is coming from essentially. This area is actually pretty lucky that there's not a ton of access into some of these points, but, and they have to climb a lot of elevation, so those are things that I would like to look for. I mean, from the top to the bottom here, we're looking at looking at about 1,500 feet in the bottom to 1,800 at the top. So it's not huge, 300 foot of elevation, but it's pretty steep. So it's going to require a little bit of of work for a hunter to go up to the top of that the these mountains, but. Um, that's also something to, to pay attention to, to see how the steepness is and how easy that access is, more so even than distance. When it comes to hunting out west and anything else from looking at a map, I typically like to throw a border of a mile around those parking areas and or access points and kind of blocking those off. Now, I don't think that's as, as important for deer hunting as the way the cover and the terrain is to be able to hide them and give them security. I've seen where bucks will lay close to roads, but if it's at a point where nobody's walking in because there's a trail, uh, you know, 100 yards down that everybody's using or a parking lot. Um, so I'm trying to find those areas that are away from these access points. And right off the bat, okay, everything seems to be on the south and a little bit on the east side here to be able to access. So on these north facing areas, you have uh, say a good valley right here. This valley is not extremely steep, but it's got some good bench systems that are running down. They can kind of hide on these side hills. Um, these are some places that I'm gonna mark of interest to, to go check out. And again, these are just general. And a lot of times the, the e-scouting portion of this is going to be the biggest part of it is to be able to find the general areas and then confirming it with boots on the ground scouting. And all of the seasons that, that I'm scouting, spring is a very important time for me to go in. And I still think it's important for during scouting, if you were for gun season, but I think it's more important to understand it at that time. So say the week before you're getting into, uh, or the weekend before gun season comes in, you know, kind of, a lot of people are out trying to set up their stands, checking out their spots, see where the vehicles are parked, drive around, take a look, understand it, and go into those areas with that in mind. After gun season ends, then in, you're getting into later in the season, later in December, early into January, this is when I wanna find the hot food sources. You take a lot of what you learned from marking food sources in the early season, minus apples. Apples are typically gone by that time of year. There are some that are more winter apples that stay on longer, but I usually don't keep those in mind. The ones I'm focusing on are oaks and 
acorns. So I'm looking for areas that had acorns. I'm looking for newer logging cuts that give some browse, they give it some sunlight in there, especially when it's cold. It can, it can uh, give them some more sunlight in some of those places. And then the third one that I haven't talked about much are spring seeps. Spring seeps stay thawed out the longest because they're wet areas that are running out of the mountain and deer can dig a little bit. Say if there's an oak tree overlooking or over top of these spring seeps, the acorns can drop in there. They can get them much later than if the ground were to freeze or you get a layer of ice on there in some of the other areas. So that allows them to be able to eat and focus. Say if you have a whole entire ridge system that's full of oaks, too many acorns to even be able to, to pinpoint it. Then you get in the later season, I'm focusing more on some of these draws. So normally you can find spring seeps. I find them more towards the, the bottom third, but they can, it depends on where they start. Sometimes it's up towards the head, but in these draw systems that are running down off of the, the mountain, as you see here. These are some of the, the areas I'm looking for those those spring seeps. But that, that'll be confirmed again with boots on the ground scouting. But typically, if you find a draw, there's some sort of a water source that's running out of there. As with the early season, boots on the ground scouting, getting in and seeing them during that season is going to help you out the most and is a crucial part of being able to identify that movement close to where we were just finding some of the other late season spots. So just across on the other point, we started working our way around and found some really big oak trees that were just dropping a ton of acorns on the ground. And when I'm looking for late season spots, if I can find these oak trees commingled with a spring seep, a big spring seep. And the reason for looking for these spring seeps is that they're the, they're the latest that to freeze because they're always soft, kind of mushy. It takes longer to freeze. And also it's a good spot for shed hunting because they also thaw the, the first two. So there's a good chance that they're in here feeding on those acorns, getting water source that's not frozen over yet. It's all in one location. So it's a very good area to focus on. When you get into January hunting, you're, it's bitter cold out. You have some of that weather. This is the time of year to focus on these spring seeps that are intermixed with the oaks. So if you can find these types of spots, mark them, and also come back in the springtime and look for sheds in them. I've found sheds in spring seeps more than just about any other place when it comes to places that had hard winters early on. If it's really cold out, I doubt that the deer are gonna be traveling very far to their food source. They might be bedding closer, they might be bedding in more open areas. They're not much pressure during that time of year. They may be in some thermal cover, so hemlocks, any sort of conifer trees. Those are things you wanna be able to identify. When you're looking at onyx, it can be difficult, again, with depending on when the aerial photograph was taken to be able to identify those, those winter thermal cover areas. So one of the things I like to do is cross-reference that, again, with Google Earth. So looking at Google Earth, you can see the real dark green areas. These are typically hemlocks. A lot in Pennsylvania are on the bottoms. They can be on south facing slopes. They can be on north facing slopes. They can be on any side of the hill, but trying to find those places that have hemlocks. In this particular area, there's doesn't seem to be any up towards the top of the hills, but as you get, it depends on what part of the state, what state you're in, whether you have some of that thermal cover, but that's something to pay attention to because that'll keep those deer out of the wind, out of the weather. And if you can find that butted up against some of those oak trees and newer logging cut, sometimes they're intermixed in those logging cuts. That's an ideal situation because you have food and you have bedding in essentially one location. They don't need to go very far. They don't need to use a bunch of energy. They can store that energy up to stay warm and be able to survive those harsh winter months. Personally, I like to hunt the late season spots with that thermal cover and food in those relatively same places when it's really windy, if uh, you have some extreme cold and snow, 
And um, in different seasons, that can be even important during high rains. But in the colder weather, it's more of snow and wind that they're trying to stay out of during those places. So we're sneaking along this bottom. We're just, we just came out of this clear cut um, where I think a lot of deer bed. And we just jumped a bed of deer. And coming along the edge and, and down this creek bottom, there's a bunch of hemlocks that cover with the heavy rain. Just thinking maybe we'll catch them bedded down in here. But as we're going down here, we're just finding some giant scrapes. It's almost some of these things that I wish that I would have did a little more in-season scouting and less sitting um, to, to come in here and hunt rather than uh, the way I did. But it's all, it's all lessons learned and take that information for the following year. Now mind you, it's difficult to hunt those places when they're bedding and feeding in the, the same locations as far as being able to slip in. So that's going to be situational on the particular area that you're looking at. In the spring, I actually like to scout those late season type spots when there's still snow on the ground. So actually into February, right after the seasons close even, get in there and be able to see where the deer are feeding. The snow will let you know from the tracks. If you find an area where, say, loggers were literally just in there, there's a bunch of tops down, you're going to notice that. You're going to see the tracks. You're going to see a ton of deer sign heading into those areas and feeding. And that's why when, when you're scouting with the snow on the ground, you can understand those travel routes a lot more. And I've found that they're not as worried about cover during that season. I think a lot of it has to do with pressure and, and the same thing with bedding. They're, they're trying to find those areas that they want to be as close to the food as possible. And you can find that, you can find beds in the snow a lot easier than you can when you're scouting and there's nothing on the ground. In the late season, I had mentioned looking at food sources such as newer logging cuts in that one to three year old range. And this one behind me is probably at a three year old range. The briars are getting up high, great browse, new growth is coming up and also have oaks around the edge here. So what I would do is walk the edge and I'm looking for any sort of funnels that funnel trails that come in to feed um, and also just other oak trees that are producing right on the edge. So I can set up in that late season in that late December, January timeframe. If you find a spot that oak trees dropped acorns, you can see where they're digging those up. You can find the, the acorn caps. You can find all those things as well right after that season. Now, mass crop can fluctuate year to year, so I don't like to completely rely on that and go in blind on it. And that's why the second section of scouting for the late season is during that season itself. I'm really only hunting evenings in the late season for the most part. When it comes to boots on the ground scouting for gun season specifically, as I talked about with riding around and checking out where trucks are, um, a, a lot of that, I'm going to do a lot of hunting those specific places off of the ground and walking and sneaking and trying to find those trails, trying to find those places that they feel secure during that time frame. When it comes to the late season, like the late, late season, end of December into January timeframe, then I'm going to go out, you know, say after Christmas timeframe, I'm going to scout um, later in the mornings throughout the midday, walk those food sources, try to find those main trails that are coming in. Maybe that's a low spot coming in. Maybe that's a strip of cover. Maybe you can see some hemlocks in the distance that, might be potential bedding. I'm not trying to walk all over the land during that time frame. I'm focusing on scouting those food sources and identifying where those are coming from. Trail cameras can be really helpful to be able to identify those spots that are coming in. To take it a whole nother level, if you can utilize cell cameras in those places, if I can throw up my Exodus render on a tree and be able to help get real-time intel, they are, can be extremely patternable during that time of year, especially if there's only a couple really good food sources during that time frame and you get some cold weather, they're going to be moving. So I wanna focus in on those cold weather days when they're moving to the food 
and and evenings are my particular favorite times to hunt during the the late season and i used to think of late season and gun season specifically as a time frame that was kind of it was difficult and i i didn't think you could really get on deer consistently but i think if you use some outside of the box tactics that it can really help you be successful during that season when it comes to late season in the December, January timeframe, so the later part of that, when the pressure is lower, that's where, again, the food source is king. The last point that I will make is don't overlook scrapes still at that time of year. I, I leave all of my cameras up, which I'm running about 30 cameras at this point, all season long, all through the winter, and most of them I can't get back to change them to late season type food source trails or anything else. I've just left them on scrapes because that's just from a time standpoint. Well, what I learned from that is they'll still work those licking branches. They're still going to work those licking branches in January. And so if you find, if you have spots that you have cameras on or just, or if you find big scrapes that are on the edge of some thick cover and maybe there's a destination food source around, maybe there's not, you really can't go wrong checking it out. It can't hurt throwing a camera on it and understanding it. One of the other food sources that can be really great in the late season is anything that's green, has grass, maybe have some sort of clover, anything along those lines. You're thinking, all right, how it's the big woods. How are you going to find places with clover? Well, a lot of gas lines, power lines, get old gas well sites, now when they're repurposing them they're kind of closing down those areas or say they put a new gas line in they will reseed that and plant clover brassicas and just even regular grasses the deer love the green torn towards those times of year and looking staying true to the map area that we were looking at here's an example of a potential you could see a big green area here that is something to mark and so I will put that in here and label it green food source and just kind of look for those types of areas. And if you're trying to focus on say like a big, get an entire logging cut here. All right, right here we have a circle. Looks like it's probably an old log landing in the, on the interior there. Those green areas are just another food source to pay attention to and take a look at when you're out scouting your area. The key focus points for the late season is during the gun season, find security cover and those hideouts, whether that be train or the vegetation. When it comes to later in the season, December and the January cold weather, food is king. They need that food to build up their bodies, cover from the rut, and try to be in a, a good place there. And the last thing is utilize cell cameras where you can to help give you the best intel during that time frame. Throughout the last four videos of the Mountain Buck Scouting Series, I broke down the early season, the pre-rut, the rut, and the late season, and how to take one specific area and be able to hunt the entire whitetail season. In the information that was presented, in the last four videos of this series and really any of the videos in this series can be applied to anywhere that you hunt. I just showed a specific example area, how we're able to break that down and go in and scout out those areas, but this can be applied across the board. Now it's up to you to put in the work, find those areas, e-scout it, get in the woods, boots on the ground and scout it out for yourself and hopefully have success this upcoming fall.